Hey everybody, this is Riker Rider, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy. Today we're going to begin Chapter 4, Warriors in the Sky. Now there's one more town that we have access to that we couldn't get to before, and the game never really directs us to go here. Just go south from Melmond until you see the tip of the peninsula on the top of the screen, and then just head west. See, there's the port that goes to the next town. Now, the enemies around here are a little tough, and some of them are new. If I run into them... That's great. If I don't run into them, oh well. I don't plan on demonstrating every single enemy in the game. See that town over there? Just go south along the lake. And you'll be able to get to the next town. And we have reached the town of Crescent Lake. Now there's a lot to do here, but before talking to everybody, I want to discuss the items here. Item shop sells pretty much everything but soft potions. You'll need to go back to Elfland to get those. That's why I told you to buy uh, extra soft potions. Now the armor shop has some uh, interesting stuff. They sell silver gear here. And they also sell bucklers, which I believe are the only shields that... Uh, Thief and Red Mage can equip. Now, there's so much stuff that you that you need to get here that I'm not gonna actually buy it on screen. I'm just gonna make a shopping list for you. Um, the weapons aren't really that useful. You could buy a silver axe for uh, your fighter if you want to use one, but um, we'll find one later. Huh, this guy doesn't say much of anything right now, but remember him for later. He will say something important after you've completed a couple of events in the story. Why are there so many cheerleaders in these towns again? Um, the white magic is... Uh, I don't think red mages can actually use any of these spells right now, but after you get the class change, make sure to come back and buy the exit spell. This is the most important spell in the game. It'll teleport you out of any dungeon, no questions asked. The only spell that I really like in uh, the Black Magic Shop is Lightning 3. Rub is an instant death spell, but it doesn't work on undead monsters. Quake... I don't like Quake, and I don't really like Stun either. Uh, stun will guaranteed paralyze any enemy with up to 300 HP, unless the enemy is immune to paralyze. And this little clearing back here is where the Circle of Sages is. Remember these guys? These guys give you a ton of information about what you're supposed to do. You could have actually come here before going to the Earth Cave to get some more information about uh, the Earth Fiend Lich, but I felt there was no reason to come here because you have enough information to determine what you want or what you're supposed to do already. Hmm. And we have no clue who these two fiends are. Really, that's what the next few chapters of the game are about. Yeah, thanks, Captain Obvious. Like, chapter... Th like, chapter 4 is about the fire fiend, chapter 6 is about the water fiend, and chapter 7 is about the wind fiend. Aha, uh -huh, that's where the fire fiend is. And this random sage, not Lucan, as the player's guide and several other sources tell you, this sage next to Lucan is the one that gives you the canoe. With the canoe, now what we can do is we can paddle along rivers. And there are a lot of rivers in Chapter 4's segment of the world map. I'm going to see you outside town after I take care of the shopping list. Alright, we're back outside town. I maxed on heal potions, got a few more pure potions, couple more houses. Houses are going to be very valuable in Chapter 4. Now, I didn't buy any new weapons, but I did buy some new armor. Like, I've got my fighter all decked out in silver equipment. Um, and I bought bucklers for, uh, for a couple of characters as well. 
You'll want to be level 15, closing in on level 16, because this next area is very hard. Um, the the um, the river patterns are just in such a maze that you'll want to follow exactly as I go. All the other paths will lead to dead ends. And you can run into monsters on the river, like the Hydra. The Hydra hits kinda hard, but... None of the river monsters you really have to worry about, except maybe gators. Gators can hit pretty hard, but the rest of them are... ...pretty easy. In fact, all the enemies in the rivers, except for the Hydra, are weak to lightning. The river monsters on the south side of the world are the same, no matter where you go. Alright, we're at the volcano. Uh, we're gonna have to make multiple trips through here to even have a chance at surviving. So I'm gonna use a house, rearrange my party, and be right back. And we're back after replenishing my HP and magic. So let's head into the volcano. There's some pretty nasty me nasty enemies here, excuse me, as well as a new dungeon mechanic. Damage floors. Uh, this one is obviously made of molten lava. Every step you take on a damage floor like that, you'll wind up losing 1 HP on all your party members, but you can't run into encounters there, so they can either be a blessing or a curse. All right. Um, this particular tile is trapped with a new enemy, the Fire Elemental. You can run into one or two of these. If there are two of them, I would recommend using Ice 2. Uh, if not... Uh, if you just have one, then Physical Attack should do. They have 276 HP and quite a bit of attack power, so be wary. Almost all the enemies in the Volcano are weak to Ice, naturally. However, you'll want to conserve your spell charges for the more dangerous encounters, such as that one. And we get some gold. This floor is expansive, which is why I don't like Great! Great, these guys. These are probably the most dangerous enemies on the upper floors of the volcano. Um, you want to get anti-fire off on these guys, or they will kill your party. Because these guys can cast fire too. Yes, all of them. Thankfully, I believe this is the only place you can run into them. Uh, is in the volcano. I'm getting pretty lucky here. That, that'll do, on average, 80 damage to your party if you don't put anti-fire up. It's ridiculous. So what do you think happens when you run into five of them, and they ambush you, and they all cast fire too? That's just the game's way of saying, screw you! I hate these guys. There's no reason for enemies this strong to be in such large groups. Now, if they could appear in groups of up to two, like the Fire Elementals, I'd have no problem with them. They'd be a fair encounter. But the whole encounter just depends on uh, you getting fire or anti-fire up. If you have both a Red Mage and a White Mage in your party, I would recommend having both of them cast anti-fire, because you have to get that up, or you will die. What I actually like doing uh, when I run into these guys is, on the first round, having um, my Red Mage or White Mage cast Anti-Fire and have everybody else Bay Dory. You're going to be using the Run button a lot in this dungeon. And we get another Silver Helmet. 
Oh, another, oh, that reminds me, another thing I did off-screen was... I actually sold... Or, yeah, I sold the, uh, the cap and gloves on my characters, because they provide negligible amounts of absorb. Um, now, normally, I would... I would fight these guys if there were one of them, but being two of them, they're really dangerous. I don't know if I'm ever going to really show those guys off, because they hit really hard. That was a battle with another fire elemental, with a chest guarding the giant sword. If you are playing the Dawn of Souls or PSP versions of the game, hold on to the giant sword. Remember the Hall of Giants I was talking about before? Uh, the giant sword deals extra damage to giant enemies, so you can grab that from the volcano and then return to the Earth Cave and earn a lot of gold. Speaking of a lot of gold, we got... If you're ever feeling too weak to continue, do not hesitate to use a house and just leave. Well, you have to leave first to use a house, but... If you bring three or four houses with you, you can be pretty uh, conservative with your treasure collection. That was a battle with another fire elemental. And he's guarding pretty negligible amounts of gold. Around this next corner, there's a fixed encounter with a fire elemental, so I'll take care of him. And down here is the treasure trove. There's a lot of awesome stuff down here. A lot of silver gear if you didn't buy any at the shop. Some extra heal potions. Now if I take one more step to the right, I'm going to get into an encounter with a new enemy. So let's go. This is the Grey Worm. They're... They're actually weak to... Oh. Huh. I guess not. I thought they were... This enemy was actually weak to fire, but nope, they're weak to ice like everybody else. I'm thinking of uh, something in the ice cave, actually. Uh, these guys have a little under 300 HP and they hit hard, so it's going to take a couple rounds of physical attacks to take these guys down. There we go. The experience they give is pretty good, though. Yay, finally! Level 16. I mean, most of these chests are just gold, but... We're gonna have a lot of things to buy very shortly. Well, maybe not very shortly, but soon enough, soon enough. There's that silver axe I told you we would find. Been pretty lucky with the encounters so far. Only one set of red gargoyles and no perilisks yet. Well, I'm gonna see you guys at the entrance to the volcano after I uh, use a house and sell some of this stuff. And we're back. This time we're gonna be going straight to the bottom. No stops this time. Because the second floor of the volcano is actually pretty short if you're not going for treasure. Ow. Stupid damage floors. There's going to be a lot of damage floors on the way down to, uh... On the way down to the Fiend of Fire, so keep an eye on your HP. Alright, just head th uh, through the path to the right. The path to the left leads nowhere. There's no treasure on this floor, either. And here's a new enemy! Cerebus! Which I'm pretty sure was a mistranslation. They have a special attack called Scorch, which basically casts fire on your entire party. So it's nothing huge to worry about. There are other enemies that have more dangerous special attacks. Farther down the dungeon. But Cerebus really isn't a threatening enemy. Definitely not worth using Anti-Fire or Ice 2 on. Alright. 
This floor is just one huge damage tile zone. Ow! Ow! Now, when you get to the stairs at the end, you'll definitely want to heal up, so I'm going to take care of that real fast. That walk across that damage floor cost me 12 heal potions. Um, this place is a bit of a maze, so you'll want to follow the path exactly as... Well, not exactly as I do, but just the general idea, because the path to the northwest uh, loops upon itself. Here's an enemy you may want to consider using anti-fire for. Um... The Red Hydra has a special attack called Cremate, which can deal a significant amount of damage to your party. They're not really that bad, but it's definitely worth using a spell charge on, because they can take a pretty big chunk out of your HP. Yeah, the deeper down you get, the more damage floors you'll see. Alright, I don't think you can run into any more Paralisks or Red Gargoyles past the third floor. But there are a lot of treasure rooms here and a lot of fixed encounter tiles to go along with them. Uh, that particular treasure chest on the right is guarded by, um, I believe, a Grey Worm from the left. But I'm trying to conserve resources, so I'm going to avoid as many of the uh, fixed encounter tiles as I can. Unless, of course, the enemies aren't very threatening. You'll want to go from northeast to northwest to south when getting the treasure rooms here. Pure potion. Some gold. And finally, the ice sword. This is a very valuable weapon in the volcano if you're playing on the Dawn of Souls version, but it's still valuable here. That was an encounter with another Grey Worm, and he was guarding a lot of gold and the Flame Shield. See, unlike uh, see, unlike specialized weapons, specialized armor actually works in this game. Uh, the Flame Shield isn't going to be useful here, but it will be useful in the next dungeon, and I would equip it anyway because it has more absorb than uh, than uh, the shield you have right now. And that's another reason why I would equip the Ice Sword, even though it's bugged, it just does more damage than uh, the Silver Sword. Yeah, the developers try to pull a little fast one on you. Ten gold, really? A Grey Worm was guarding ten gold and 155 gold. <sighs> Gam. Alright, last treasure room. Both of these tiles are guarded. Buy a new enemy, Agama. Uh, these guys give out fantastic experience, and they're not really that big a threat. They have a physical attack that it's kinda hard, and they have a special attack called Heat, which is about as powerful as Scorch, maybe even a little bit weaker. You can take them out in two rounds, and they give fantastic amounts of experience. So, if you have a lot of resources, and you are a little bit low in the levels, you may want to consider uh, taking these guys out over and over again. Well, there's another one guarding the next chest, so I'll take care of it and be right back. You know, the wooden staff joke is getting old game. wanted to do a little bit of healing. <sighs> Final floor. Now this floor may look intimidating with its eight-way branch, but there's only two rooms of interest. All the other ones are empty. This room over to the left contains the only treasure chest we care about. Now if I take one more step down, I'm gonna run into another Agama, so I'll take care of him. Now if I take one more step to the right, I'm going to run into an enemy that's more dangerous than the boss. The Red Dragon. If you don't get anti-fire up, uh, this dragon has an attack called Blaze that is basically fire three. And it will just absolutely roast your party alive. <sighs> Thank god I got that up. 
Okay, now look at how much damage this is doing with anti-fire. That is so much damage. That can do over 200 damage to your entire party if you don't get that spell up. Once you have that up, though, the battle isn't that bad. His physical attack is powerful, but yeah, Blaze can just destroy you from out of nowhere. But in this treasure chest, we get the flame armor. You'll want to equip that on your fighter immediately. That's the reason why I didn't buy the steel armor back at Melmond, is because that has the same properties as the steel armor, except I think it's lighter. Alright. Oh, here's another new enemy that's... They're vanilla, but they hit really hard. Uh, this is the Red Giant. They have 300 HP and a damage rating of 73, which is almost as high as the Red Dragon. They are weak to ice, but I think it's just better using physical attacks on them. And you want to conserve uh, level 4 spell charges for using ice 2 and fast. You'll also want to save uh, your level 5 white magic spell charges for Cure 3, because there are it's not just uh, the boss that hits hard. These enemies and a couple other enemies down here hit hard, so if you need to... Um... Personally, I like taking the damage floors, because they'll take less HP off than your typical encounter will. Alright, we've made it to the Fiend's Lair. I'm going to restore myself to full HP. <sighs> and we're back. Whew, made it all the way to, to the boss's room with only 16 heal potions to spare. Ah, the Fire Fiend carry. The only fire attack carry can use is... Uh, fire 2, but I'm not really worried about Fire 2 in this battle. I'm worried about Carrie's physical attack. She has a damage stat of 40, and she can hit up to 6 times. So she can just decimate uh, anyone who's not fighter. I would get fast going on all your physical attackers as quickly as possible, and just get as much damage out there as you can. Uh, one, uh, interesting, one interesting note... Um, if you fight Carrie after you get the class change, she is susceptible to the stun spell. Once you deal 300 damage to her, you can cast stun, and she'll be paralyzed. And this is also the only battle that I find the Sleep 2 spell useful. Uh, she is susceptible to that, but you pretty much need Sleep 2 for, uh, for the spell to be able to land on her with any kind of consistency. She's actually not weak to ice. As a matter of fact, she's strong against it, which is really weird. You would think the uh, Fire Fiend would be weak to ice, but she's not. Yay! We got her! Finally. Now let's go ahead and step forward onto the Altar of Fire. And now the Fire Orb has gained its light once more. Two down, two to go. Let's get out of here and get back to town. Next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy, we'll return to Crescent Lake and figure out where we need to go next.